We've touched down in my motherland, a crowded metropolis where every corner tells a story of the vibrant city life here in Hong Kong. By the way, I'm Fiona. I'm here in Hong Kong wrapping up the final two episodes of my Discover Asia series. Hong Kong is very convenient with everything at your fingertips including a massive plant market much like the one we explored in Thailand. But here's the catch. Hong Kong is famous for its expensive real estate and ultra tiny apartments all due to its dense population. This has sparked a trend of filling these cozy spaces with tiny plants. Everything is tiny here. In today's video, our local friend Mary, a talented crochet artist and plant enthusiast, will take us through Hong Kong's huge plant market that is filled with tiny plants. While there's a lot to explore in this market, our focus today will be on the rise of tiny miniature plants, something I've never come across anywhere else in this world. Our first stop is this charming shop with no English name, but don't worry, I'll provide the address right here. Before we start filming, we made sure to ask for permission, as many places here don't allow it. Fortunately, the owner not only welcomed us to film, but also personally gave us an exclusive tour. <laughs> she shared with us that many plant enthusiasts in Hong Kong already have an extensive plant collection at home. As a result, they often go for smaller plants like these mini orchids. They are so tiny. These minis will grow additional leaves and flower stems, but they will never grow to the size of a traditional moth orchid. 但迷你蘭花和普通蝴蝶蘭是真的差不多的名字。但我看那個迷你品種,但出來的花子好像跟普通蘭花一樣大。One fascinating detail they share with me is that despite their petite size, these plants can still produce flowers as large as their traditional counterparts. 我喜歡講簡單的花。哇,看不出來。<laughs> the owner imports many of her plants from Taiwan and the Philippines, including exotic varieties of mini orchids and begonias. These plants often require higher humidity levels, and I couldn't help but notice that she strategically placed water fountain features throughout her shop, not only for their aesthetic appeal, but also to naturally increase the humidity levels. Mary and I also loved how she had pots of mixed plants, creating a very natural look. She mentioned that she often takes cuttings from her shop to create these diverse combinations of plants. And that just made me admire her passion even more. I thought she wouldn't be able to let go of her beautiful creations, but she said she will happily sell them. <laughs> at the front of her shop, there is a beautiful display of her favorite and exotic plants that initially caught our attention and drew us in. Among them, there is a collection of staghorn ferns, which is a very popular plant in Asia. 
While they may not be as massive as the ones that we've encountered in the Thai market, the sack harm fern varieties here is very impressive. There is this particular staghorn fern that completely fascinated me, but unfortunately I forgot to ask for its name. So if anyone happens to know it, please share it with me. Our time at her shop was pretty awesome. She greeted us warmly, and the plant selection was so impressive. Her insight into tiny plants were also eye opening, and of course, her tiny cute dog just made the whole experience even cooler. After that, we couldn't resist checking out some other shops in the market. Some specializing in specific types of plants, from mini bonsais to a sea of orchids, with rows upon rows of these colorful flowers. But today, our mission is all about hunting for those tiny plants, and Mary is leading the way to a chain store called Walking. You won't believe it until you see it. They've got an entire collection of plants in a two inch pot. Back in the States, I'm used to seeing plants in pots that are at least four inch. Yeah, Two inch. <laughs> one inch. <laughs> one inch. One inch. What do you think about the sighting? <laughs> this has to be the smallest fiddle leaf fig I've ever come across for sale. It's literally the size of my hand, leaves and all. Everything is tiny here. Just look at these mini cacti in their little one inch pots. I'm tempted to take all of them home. But check out these money trees. They're the chunkiest and thickest ones I've ever stumbled upon. The trunk on these babies is practically the size of my neck. <laughs> I've never come across a Stephania recta leaf this massive before. It's a perfect example of how some plants here can be notably larger compared to what we typically see in the States. Just down the street, Mary led me to a store specializing in mini hydroponics where plants thrive and grow in nothing but water. This is my first time seeing a succulent in a self-watering pot. It's definitely a creative concept, and I'm curious about how sustainable it is for the plant's well-being. This store is a hydroponic lover's dream come true. It's filled with all sorts of plants thriving in water from calitheas to orchids, alocasias, and even my favorite philodendrons. <laughs> and I take back what I said earlier about the smallest fiddle leaf fig for sale. This one is even tinier. Back on the streets in search of tiny plants, Mary mentioned how orchids are the most popular plants in Hong Kong, with many shops specializing in their sale. <laughs> I'm curious for all of you watching, what's the most popular plant in your country? There are some common orchids selling as low as $15 for three. But then we stumbled upon a shop that sells more uncommon orchids, and they actually rank orchids based off of their popularity.
The owner shared that the mini orchids are currently the most sought after amongst the customers as well. After seeing such a wide variety of orchids, I can finally understand the hype surrounding these beautiful plants. Let's switch gears and take a quick detour to the bird garden. Here you'll encounter a wide range of birds. Halka has areas specializing in many interests including Goldfish Street and Sneaker Street. It's just a city that caters to many different passions. As we return to the plant market, something very caught my eye. It's a plant shop cat. It seems like there's always a plant shop cat wherever we go. It's the feline jungle in the wild. But okay, let's stay focused and continue our quest for tiny plants. Our next stop happens to be one of Mary's favorite. This store offers a fantastic selection of mini plants at an affordable price with some starting as low as a dollar. <laughs> Mary mentioned that pileas are really hard to come across in Hong Kong and some are even exclusive for certain shops. Exclusive, was it? Exclusive, he gone yo. They present these tiny treasures in little baskets and each featuring a picture of the mature plant, making it feel like you're choosing a sort of candy from a candy store. He did have one inch pot. <laughs> I absolutely love this idea and I wish they'd do something like this back in New York City. We also live in tiny spaces and need tiny plants. <laughs> I'm also obsessed with the staghorn fern selection in this shop. I wish they sold these back home as well. The one I have at home didn't make it while I was away on this trip, and I really want to get back to growing them. Just when I thought we've seen it all, we stumbled upon even smaller plants being sold outside, priced at around $1.50. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I bought the same exact size jewel orchid back home for $20. This one here is not only more affordable, but also so pretty with the lightning pattern. What a steal! Mary mentioned that back in the days you can get three plants for a dollar fifty. It seems like they already raised the price and that already blows my mind. If we had these kinds of prices in New York City, I'm pretty sure I'll easily end up with a collection of over 500 plants. I'm really excited about this tiny plant trend in Hong Kong, and I hope it makes its way to New York someday. We face similar challenges with limited living spaces, and I certainly wouldn't mind having those Hong Kong plant prices either. There's something truly rewarding about watching a plant grow from a small plant to a big one no matter where you are. There's still so much more to explore here and I don't want to reveal everything so that you can experience this in person. One of the most valuable lessons I learned from these small plants thriving in a crowded city is that growth and resilience can flourish even in the most confined spaces. It's really cool to see how Hong Kong can get creative with selling plants and making them accessible in tiny small sizes to meet the demand. 
And that's a wrap on our exploration of small plants here in Hong Kong. Stay tuned for our next episode where we explore more of Hong Kong's plant scene. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single moment of this epic journey.